okay guys we did it this is the fit for the day black shirt black skirt nothing crazy and i feel like i look good the pimple this is an accessory at this point because i feel good i feel real good okay so my mom told me to get there before 12. it's currently 11 30 it takes me 20 minutes to get there so we're gonna see how long it takes and i have to make one more call for the day because i have a meeting tomorrow and i need to get a certain piece of documentation that has already been written i just it's left it's in cyberspace somewhere and i don't know where to find it so Okay, it took us 50 minutes to get here because traffic was kind of kooky crazy. I think I have everything I need. I brought my oil and I brought my Bible. <laughs> I see my leasing agent leaving, so that's a little concerning, but yeah. Okay, so welcome to the kitchen. This is where we will be cooking our meals. Um, it has a gooseneck sink that you can pull out. Guys, absolutely fab. It also has a garbage disposal, which I'm scared of. I don't like garbage disposals, but it is very American to have garbage disposals, so this one has it. I'm gonna turn it on and try not to be scared. <coughs> like, oh lord. But the sink is really pretty. It's like a double sink. It's huge. You can like bathe a child in here or like a little doggy. And the countertops look like they're granite. They're like this light granite color. And then all the hardware is dark black hardware throughout the kitchen. It has outlets as well, all scattered throughout the kitchen. And all stainless steel appliances was definitely a must have. Super, super happy to have those. And they're all GE. But yeah, it comes with the typical. So you have your washing machine, you have your sink, you have your stove, your microwave, and your fridge. So all of those are full size and really brand spanking new. So very, very happy about the kitchen. Okay, from the kitchen, let's move on to the next space, which is like the laundry room as well as the pantry. So as you can see, there is a bunch of shelves here that you can put some food on or even like your toiletries and all that good stuff. And then you also have a coat rack to hang your coats and a bunch of space like down below to put your shoes. And then also over here to the left of me, I have a full-size washer and dryer. So as you can see, a full-size washer and dryer. This is the dryer at the top. This is the washer at the bottom. All full-size, all brand new. So I no longer have to go up and down the stairs in an elevator to clean my sheets and my laundry, which I'm very, very happy about. And then overall, the space holds the HVAC and the water heater. So there's like, a, it's basically just like a big, Big laundry room and like a mud room okay so hopefully you can hear me but this is the living room area there's obviously like nothing in here but it's a big amount of space to do things I definitely want to put like a little breakfast bar stool thing going on over there and then I'm also gonna have like a couch here and I think I'm also gonna put my desk here so I can work out here like probably put my TV on this wall put my couch on this wall put my desk behind it like there's just a lot of room for me to do things in but it's also like not too much I think the problem with some of the other places was just it was like so much room that I didn't need but this is absolutely the perfect size for me in my first ever big girl apartment okay so welcome to the bathroom again we have the same dark hardware like it is a big bathroom like this bathroom is really big and I'm really tall, so like it just works out perfectly. It has a nice shower with this beautiful glass sliding door. 
It has really nice black hardware here as well and a lot of storage space. It's gorgeous and it has a fan because my last bathroom did not have a fan. Not trying to be TMI, but fans help. So when you turn this on, you have the light to the shower, but you also rev up the fan. So definitely can't complain. It's a little bit less counter space, but it makes up work with all the storage at the bottom. So love it. I can't wait to like organize in here. I'm so excited. Alrighty, welcome to the walk-in closet. The bedroom is pretty basic. It's just like a box. There's no view, which I don't mind, honestly. At first I was like, there's no window in the bedroom. But honestly, I appreciate how big this walk-in closet is. Like if I had to trade a window for this walk-in closet every day, all day, I would trade it. It has like wonderful shelving, enough racks for like, I see my shirts going here, my pants going here, my dress is going here. Like they organize this how I would organize it so I don't have to organize it, which I love. It's actually really well lit and the bedroom is super big, but I think I'm going to keep my desk in the living room and keep the space inside here like as clear as possible and sort of separate like work from leisure, but it's absolutely gorgeous. I love the color of the walls, they're this nice like gray beige color beautiful so that is the apartment and that was the walkthrough hopefully you enjoyed it i'm so happy to be here like even standing in this closet i'm like this could be like a little prayer closet like i'm so excited god is really good it's amazing how god has moved me and is just allowing this experience to stretch me as a believer in christ jesus and i just love him so much for that so all right hey everyone so it's been a couple of days since i started moving in as you can see we have a couch i will be sharing with you guys a little bit more of the process in some later videos but i really wanted to sit down and tell you the testimony of how this apartment came about and i knew that when i was going through this the lord told me that when everything was done and when i was settled that I almost like had a responsibility to come on my channel and talk to you all about my experience and share with you some ways to be encouraged if you're in a similar situation as me where you feel like you want to move to a new level in your life and your back is against the wall, if you feel like God is calling you to a place but you see opposition and that could be in moving or just starting a new career, taking a leap of faith in some other aspect or area of your life I think that this message and this story is applicable and can be so encouraging to the people of God and just like anybody who's kind of going through something in life. So if you're interested in finding out more and would love to listen, I definitely suggest that you stick around. I tried to script this a lot, a couple different times, and I found that the best way to do this was just to talk. So I have some scriptures that I am going to be sharing with you. So those are going to be on my iPad. But in terms of just like recounting everything that happened, I'm just going to sort of like let the Lord use me and he's going to speak. I'm not going to speak. And I really just pray that this blesses and encourages someone that may be in the midst of a trial or wanting to do something, but is afraid or maybe has a lack of faith. I'm touching and agreeing with you and praying that in Jesus name what God has promised for you will be released to you and you know that you can step forward without fear but in faith. So to sort of start the story off I want to say that going into August on August 9th 2023 I wrote in my journal something very specific that had to do with my faith in God. Before I even knew all of this was gonna happen, I said, I realized I haven't been asking for things, things that I would like to see change or would like to have you, being God, present and move in my life in. I think I don't ask because I'm scared if I ask, it's going to change my relationship with you, God, if what I ask for doesn't happen. I don't wanna be mad or disappointed in you, but Jesus, I know you're a gentleman. Yahweh, I know I have to give you permission to move in my life, and that's most likely why I'm not seeing things change or feel stagnant in my life. I need to petition to you, take it to the Lord in prayer, and I need to tap into my Abba Father's supernatural power. And what I mean by this is I think sometimes as Christians, we can tend to get comfortable in our lives. You know, once you say the prayer of salvation, it's like, okay, cool. Like I've done that. And you might pray to the Lord and say, you know what, uh, please take me to my destination safely. Or Lord, please bless this food. These sort of like basic asks of the Lord. 
Um, and I was in that place where I was moving very contently. Like I was in a situation where I was living in student housing because I had just recently started a new degree. And um, it was just a matter of, I didn't really know where I was living. I didn't really know what was going on in life. And I didn't know the area. And I also didn't have a car at the time. So I needed to be in a place where it was close to work and close to school. And the best answer for that was student housing. And I was living life there day to day. And although I wasn't 100% happy, I kind of felt like maybe I was living under my potential. I would just pray and ask God for like basic things, like providing for my needs. And in all honesty, I was like just asking for like, Lord, please make me content in my situation. But there was a tugging at my heart that was telling me that there was greater, that I was designed for more than just living in student housing. Because my life consisted of, I woke up, I went to work, I work on campus, I'm a TA, I'm a teacher or sometimes I'm working in lab, which is also on campus, and then I come home, and then I go to classes, and classes are also on campus. So it's like my whole life was revolving around just living on campus, and I felt very isolated, and I didn't feel like I was able to grow. And even in the space in and of itself, like although it was a nice student apartment where I was living by myself, you know how it is when you live in a school dorm if you've ever lived in it like there's people smoking weed you know there's like noise there's just a lot of people in and out and also like in that apartment i had lived through some friendships relationships times in my life where whenever i would come in there i did feel like this was the past this was not somewhere where the lord wanted me to be and I couldn't be free in my creativity. I couldn't be free in like developing it as, a, as an adult. Like I was living with 18 year olds in the same building. So the Lord started to tug on my heart to seek for more. And part of me was just like, oh, Leah, you're being ungrateful. Like why? Like just be content. Pray for con being content and happy in your situation. And I was very like, I don't want to ask the Lord for anything. Because what if I don't end up moving? What if I can't find the place? You know what I mean? But my mom actually came in July, and July is my birthday month, and she actually confirmed what the Lord was already saying to me all those weeks and weeks before, when she was like, Aaliyah, I don't see you here. Like, this is not the place where I think you need to be. Um, it was also, like, not in the best area as well, so I couldn't really, like, get out and go for walks or do things like that. I really had to stay in the bubble of campus or, like, drive significant amounts of time, like 45 minutes, just to, like, feel comfortable or safe and she would talk to me and she's like I don't see you in this campus anymore I don't see you in this apartment let's start looking and let's start believing by faith for God to place you into a new environment let's look for a new apartment and honestly I thought it would be like a straightforward process where because of how student housing works it's like by semester so we made this decision like in July that we want to start looking for new places so by faith I was looking for places and then my lease would end for my student apartment um, by the end of spring and it honestly put me in some financial hardships because I was just trying to like get everything paid out so by the time the move out date which was August 19th came I would be good to go to leave the apartment and then by that time I was hoping to have a place so I'm looking for apartments and simultaneously I'm trying to initiate leaving student housing and that sort of entails this process where you have to go through a cancellation. So you basically give a reason as to why you want to move out. The main two reasons that are most accepted in the process are either saying I have a medical issue or that you've graduated. Those are two reasons where it's like automatically, yes, you're free to go. Personally, I'm not a liar. I wasn't, I wasn't graduating. I didn't have any sort of like health issue at the time. So I chose another option, which was financial. So it was an option on the application. So I put it in and I'm like, okay, if I just say in general, which was the truth, like I really can't sustain living here any longer, they should understand. And plus I've already finished paying off for this lease. You can call it a lease. I've lived here for the summer semester. I paid off the summer semester. So we should be good. Like get me out before the fall semester starts and that's it. And it honestly put me in some financial hardships because I was just trying to like get everything paid out. So by the time the move out date, which was August 19th came, I would be good to go to leave the apartment and then by that time I was hoping to have a place. So I'm looking for apartments and simultaneously I'm trying to initiate leaving student housing. And that sort of entails this process where you have to go through a cancellation. So you basically give a reason as to why you want to move out. 
the main two reasons that are most accepted in the process or either saying I have a medical issue or that you've graduated. Those are two reasons where it's like automatically, yes, you're free to go. Personally, I'm not a liar. I wasn't, I wasn't graduating. I didn't have any sort of like health issue at the time. So I chose another option, which was financial. So it was an option on the application. So I put it in and I'm like, okay, if I just say in general, which was the truth, like I really can't sustain living here any longer. They should understand. And plus I've already finished paying off for this lease. You can call it a lease. I've lived here for the summer semester. I paid off the summer semester. So we should be good. Like get me out before the fall semester starts and that's it. So I put in my cancellation request and looking for apartments. I actually get approved for this apartment that I'm in right now after being rejected from one that you probably saw in the previous video. And I truly believe that this apartment is where he wants me to be in terms of location and everything like that. Brand new apartment, absolutely gorgeous. I consider it a luxury apartment. I think it's amazing. The spirit of the Lord is here. There's no smoking allowed, no nothing. There's quiet hours, like it's it's perfect, I love it. But then I got the response for my cancellation request and they denied my cancellation request and they actually put on the balance that I would have owed for the fall semester. So they almost assumed because I had this cancellation request denied that I would just continue living with them in the fall. So on my student account, it was around like seven to $8,000 that to cover that first six months of the fall semester. So I was in the process of signing the lease and making a commitment to this apartment, which would require me to pay monthly rent. And then I also was just told that my cancellation request was denied. So I would be on, on top of that, I would owe a bunch of money that it was unforeseeable. Like I did not think that that would happen. And that I think was where the faith really kicked in because I was at my wit's end. I had no idea what to do. So I started calling people in student housing about what I could do. And they told me that there was this appeal process and you go through this appeal process. You only have one try to go through the appeal process. You write a letter, you meet with a committee of like five people that are basically judging your story. And if you get approved for the appeal, that's great. But if you get denied, you are not allowed to appeal again. So, that cancellation stays and that money is still owed. And part of me at that time just wanted to cancel everything because I didn't want to deal with the pressure of having to go through this appeal process just for them to tell me no. And then I signed a lease for one place while also owing money. It would, it would have been like a very messy situation. Regardless of how I felt, I knew that this was what I was praying for. This was the faith moment that I asked for on August 9th, 2023. Just a couple days later when I got that cancellation, I knew I had a decision to either just run and hide or to ask the Lord to come through on what he had been telling me and confirming to me through my mom all those weeks before when he told me on the week of my birthday that it was time for me to move. So I kept moving forward, not only with the cancellation process, but also with the moving process. So I started writing my appeal. I made it into like this huge like document. If you don't know, I'm a research student. I document my life here on YouTube doing research. I literally made a research document three pages long with different figures of information because I'm going to believe by faith that God will get me out the situation, but I'm also going to use the knowledge and tools that the Lord gave me to leverage as I believe by faith. As we know in James 2 verse 17, it says in the same way, Faith by itself, if not accompanied by action, is dead. And this is something that I really live by. This idea that we're believing God by faith that he'll get us through things. But we also have to act things out. We have to do the work on our part here on earth as the Lord moves things in the supernatural. What does that mean? That means we're praying, believing by faith completely, but we're also writing the best appeal letter we can, calling as many people as we can and making sure things get done. So as I'm writing my appeal, I'm also meeting a lot of people along the way that work for administration in the financial department, housing department, and everyone I spoke to was like, are you doing a housing cancellation appeal? Oh, never seen anyone successfully get out of those. They told me stories that are like this one guy, both his parents lost their job, he went for a housing cancellation, and he didn't get approved and he still had to pay it and he had to take it alone. And everyone was like, you need to think about alternatives for when this doesn't work out. You need to think about what loan you're going to take out. And if you're going to move to a cheaper housing on campus, or if you're going to have to move out and potentially be homeless. So there were so many voices in my head that honestly started to bog me down and make me feel like this was impossible. And through that, what it taught me is the importance of 
ignoring the sounds of people around you. If you're familiar with 1 John 4, 4, where it states, you dear children are from God and have overcome them, them being the world, the systems of man, because the one who is in you, who's Jesus, God, the Holy Spirit, is greater than the one who is in the world. So those, again, those systems in the world, the housing system that was holding me down. They are from the world and therefore speak from the viewpoint of the world and the world listens to them. We are from God and whoever knows God listens to us, but whoever is not from God does not listen to us. This is how we recognize the spirit of truth and the spirit of falsehood. Specifically, what I want to focus on is verse 5 where it says, They are from the world and therefore speak from the viewpoint of the world and the world listens to them. So I was in a position where I was surrounded by advices and just influences from the world. Those who are of the world and not filled with the spirit of the Lord would have listened to what they had to say and said, okay, maybe we should explore some loan options. Maybe I should stop looking for another apartment because I'm probably going to get canceled because no one else has ever been approved for this. But I decided to walk on faith. Mind you, I'm saying this to you now and I sound strong, but in the moment I was not able to sleep. I was going through very difficult periods of like anxiety because of this. I went to like a six to six fast the whole time until I got the decision. I was fasting, waking up at five o'clock in the morning, praying. Thank God I had my mother there for a support. We would pray on FaceTime from five o'clock to seven, believing by faith that what we had asked for of the Lord would be done. So it wasn't just like, oh yeah. Like I just went through this and like a couple days went by and I was kind of chilling because I just knew. This was the first time where I really was in a situation where I did not know the outcome. I was unsure of what would happen and it was out of my control. Once I sent the appeal request, I had like a couple days until I had to meet with the board of directors for the housing department where I would have to again state my case to them. I was just praying and praying and praying. Not only praying that the Lord would deliver me from the situation and give me an approval, but just praying that the Lord strengthened my faith throughout it all. It literally was up to God to do this for me. And if he didn't do it, it would not get done. There was no success stories. I was thinking about like the percentage. It was like, I think I heard one person that I talked to out of the seven different people I spoke to in this experience that said there was a positive, someone actually has gotten one of these cancellation appeals approved. So I had put in the appeal, I believe it was on Thursday. And over that weekend, I was just packing my stuff in my apartment because I was walking in faith. I was walking in faith saying, as soon as I get that appeal approved, I gotta be out of here because I need to leave by the 19th. That's the checkout day for the summer semester. That's up until how much I paid. So once this gets approved, I know they're expecting me out by the 19th. So I was walking as if I had already gotten the approval and they told me I needed to move out by the 19th. Packing boxes, cleaning my clothes, organizing things. I started going to Home Depot. I went to Home Depot. I bought the boxes I needed from Home Depot. And I also stepped forward and I signed the lease to my apartment before I got the decision of the appeal. Knowing that if the appeal was declined, I would not only owe money for this student apartment, but I would also start paying rent for this new apartment. So this was the extreme, most extreme walk of faith. But I wasn't just doing this because I want to move out of an apartment. I did it because the Lord had already promised me from before August. He had promised me that there was more coming in this next half of the year. Me signing the lease to this apartment before I got the decision was simply moving in obedience to the Lord. It was not a matter of selfishness. It was hearing the Lord say, Aaliyah, you must go and going. And this reminded me of the story of the Israelites in Exodus 14, when they're finally done, they went through all the plagues, they're leaving, they're, they're going through their exodus, so their exit out of Egypt, and then they see a Red Sea before them, and the Egyptians behind them. And I chose in that moment to not be like the Israelites who said in verse 10, as Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked up and there were Egyptians marching after them. They were terrified and cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you brought us out to the desert to die? What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? Didn't we say to you in Egypt, leave us alone, let us serve the Egyptians. It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. That is a response that I could have had. Now where my first initial cancellation application gets denied and they tell me I need to appeal, I could have been like, 
I'm not moving forward. Did I really feel from the Lord that he told me to move to a next level just for me to go and put in this cancellation and it be denied? But part of my prayer and part of the fast was me repenting for that doubt. The doubt that has held me back in the past. The doubt that said, why did I even bother doing this if it's not going to be smooth and easy? This is what this this test and this trial had actually pushed me through and started allowing me to grow out of. And 13, we'll continue with the story of the Israelites because I think it can teach us something. Moses answered the people, do not be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. Then the Lord responds to Moses because Moses then goes to the Lord. He's like, listen, these people are complaining. You did promise us that we're going to go to a promised land. You did promise us that we're moving to a new level in our life. So why, when I'm starting to do this, am I seeing opposition? Didn't you say that this opposition was no more? The Lord responds to Moses in verse 15 and says, why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. Raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea to divide the water so that the Israelites can go through the sea on dry ground. I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And I will gain glory through Pharaoh and all his army, through his chariots and his horsemen. The Egyptians will know that I am the Lord when I gain the glory through Pharaoh, his chariots and his horsemen. You go to verse 21. Moses acts in obedience. We must move in the face of opposition. When you see a Red Sea before you and when you see your past coming to chase you, decisions that you may have made, don't dwell on the decisions. Dwell on the promise that the Lord had given you and move forward. The Lord is telling the children of Israel to be still in their mind, but also have actionable steps to move forward. So me buying the boxes, me signing the lease, is me moving in the midst of not even knowing if the Red Sea will split. It's just walking forward in obedience to the Lord and in total faith. And it's in those moments of total faith where you feel like everything is going to crumble because best believe those children of Israel are walking into a Red Sea. They're like, we're probably going to drown. But the Lord said to move, so we're moving. Same thing with me, where it's like, okay, I just signed my lease and I might owe people a whole lot of money and I don't know what I'm doing, but the Lord says to move, so I'm gonna sign the lease and I'm gonna buy these boxes and I'm gonna move by faith. So in 21, we see the response. We see how the Lord responds to us when we are obedient and we move in faith, even if we don't know what the outcome will be. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and all that night, the Lord drove the sea back with a strong east wind and turned it into dry land. The waters were divided and the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with a wall of water on their right and their left. The story continues on where the Egyptians tried to follow them into the promise that the Lord had given them in the split Red Sea. And the Lord sends another wind to drown all of the enemies of the Israelites and they never see them again. All because they move on obedience and they're walking by faith, not by sight. All right, y'all, sorry. My, my camera does this thing where um, when it gets too hot, turns off, testimony was getting too hot, so I had to let it breathe. Setting the stage of where we're at. Sign the lease for my apartment on the 16th. I have my appeal meeting on the 17th. I have to be out of the apartment by the 19th, okay? So 16th, I sign the lease. 17th is the day after the Thursday I have to meet with them. And then on the 19th, if all goes well and they give me my appeal approval, they'll tell me that I need to move out by the 19th. The 17th rolls around. And like I mentioned, this meeting is essentially you going in in front of five people and stating your case, restating what you said in your appeal letter and giving any additional information. And it's also an opportunity for them to ask you questions. I recorded it. I was scared. At times I did get overwhelmed. Okay, I did cry. But before I went in there, I just asked the Lord to speak on my behalf. It was giving Moses. Okay, because Moses, you know, he was stuttering. He's like, Lord, please tell me what to say. And that's what I said to the Lord. Just tell me what to say. But long story short, I felt like the meeting went well. They told me in the meeting that I would get a decision either the 17th, which is a Thursday, or the 18th, which is a Friday. And once I got that decision, if approved, I would need to be out by the 19th. But they said they would let me know by the end of the week, which was the Friday, the 18th. So Thursday rolls around, no response, because you're working with work people. So by the time it's like four o'clock, you don't get an email, wait till the next day. Friday rolls around. So remember, they already told me they're gonna get back to me by Friday the latest. So I was supposed to already have a decision. I was emailing people like, hey, just letting you know that I haven't received an email, but I'm waiting. Turns out Friday rolls around, four o'clock comes, didn't get a decision, and I start feeling defeated. I'm like, Lord, why did they not give me a decision? 
The 19th is a Saturday. So if they were hypothetically going to allow me to move out, if the deadline is the 19th and I don't get a response by the 18th, then that means they just declined me because they don't need me to move out by the 19th because they already declined me. So that was what my thought process was. Thankfully, my mom was already on the highway on her way driving because she was helping me move as well. So even though I did not receive anything and in my head, the flesh in me was like, well, you didn't get a response. Today's Friday. They told you that if you got approved, you would get a message and you need to be out by Saturday. So if they don't send you a message on Friday and you have to move out by Friday, that means you got declined. So there's no need for you to move out on the Saturday. But nevertheless, with my mother there, she dragged me. And that's why I think it's so important to have people around you, whether that be your parents, whether it be your pastors, people in your friend group, people in your church that help you and support you through times of need. A three-stranded cord is not easily broken. Where two or three are gathered in Jesus' name, that's why it's important to have these Jesus influences, the Lord is here. So when she was there, she was just encouraging me to stay in a better place. So we kept packing and we actually did move out on the 19th. And in an act of faith, it was me moving out, going to the desk and saying, I'm formally checking out. I took a video of my apartment being empty and clear, and I sent it to all of the people that I had the meeting with at the committee meeting. Before they even made a decision, even though the decision didn't come and it looked like they were going to say no, I said, I have moved out. Cleared out my apartment, took off the sticker, took off my badge, returned my keys, everything. So I had no access to that apartment, and I moved by faith. Monday rolls around, and the decision finally comes. And I get an email at like 4.59 p.m., that says, congratulations, your appeal has been approved. Get out by tomorrow. So yes, at the end of the day, the Lord was victorious in all things. And you see what the devil tried to do, right? They told me my decision would come on Friday the 18th by the latest. And I felt defeated because I didn't receive the answer of man. But in the spirit realm, the Lord had already told me from the beginning of July that I was moving. So on the 19th, when it was my window, the day to move, I moved on the 19th and lo and behold, the response came on the 21st. And part of my prayer was like, Lord, please remove any delay. Sometimes there's a delay in the spirit when it's already done. God has already completed it. He's already finished it. He's honored your faith, but there's opposition in the spirit realm that you have to pray against. I just feel like this whole experience had put me in a new mindset and a new boldness in my relationship with the Lord. I am no longer just a Christian who's like, okay, we just gonna go with the flow and Lord, give me grace. Like, yes, Lord, give me grace to deal with what I'm going through. But I also have the authority to look at situations I'm in. And if the Lord is saying, if you want greater, ask for greater. He just wants you to give him permission to move in your life. And that permission also comes with faith. And I want to share with you a couple scriptures to encourage you and some tips that I use. Take it from someone like me. Okay. Deals with anxiety. Diagnosed with anxiety by the world. The Lord has taught me in this to start renewing my mind being transformed by the renewing of my mind changing the way i think changing the things that i believe in changing the expectations that i put on the world all through this experience so i want to share with you the first tip to remember that it is a joy to be tested in james 1 verse 2 it says consider it pure joy my brothers and sisters whenever you face trials of many kinds because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. In verse 6 of the same chapter, it says, But when you ask things of the Lord, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. So again, when you're walking through this faith, when you're asking the Lord and believing by faith that he's going to do these things and take you to these new levels, you have to be very intentional to not act like the children of Israel. And the Lord will understand, like, we are human, we have flesh. So it's not like you can never doubt ever in your life. Because trust me, through this process, I was doubting. I was like, let me cancel this lease. How can I figure this out? How can I take out a loan to pay for this? Like, I was already thinking of alternatives in my flesh. But at the end of the day, I had to shut down those thoughts of doubt. Don't let those thoughts of doubt continue to sprout in your mind because then you become doubtful. You become full of doubt when you let doubt take control. True faith is, yes, you're gonna doubt. You're only human. You might start thinking of alternatives, but as soon as you recognize those things, you shut them down 
and then reaffirm your faith and say, thank you, Jesus, for the victory. I removed doubt because I thank the Lord for my victory. There was a point where I was sitting in a Chick-fil-A with my mom saying, should I drop out of school because I don't have enough money to sustain this if they decline my request. So this was not just like a beautiful, wonderful walk in the park, which is why I want to encourage my girlies, my boys with anxiety. Okay, that is not your portion. Walk forward in victory in Jesus' name. So that's the first thing I want to tell you. Count it a blessing that you have a trial and you have a test because that is building you as a Christian. It's drawing you closer to the Lord and closer in dependence of him. The next thing that I will say is when you are attacked with these thoughts of doubt and anxiety, yes, one thing it is important to pray, but I think worship is also a very important tool. I'm a worshiper. I love worshiping to the Lord. Even when I got this apartment on the 16th and the next day I was going to have my appeal meeting, I didn't know what was going to happen. I stood in this apartment and I began to sing to the Lord. I just began to sing and thank the Lord for this apartment as if it was already done. I began to bless him through song. And this is important. If you go to 2 Kings verse 3 to set the stage, Elisha was a powerful prophet in the Lord. And he was there with the children of Israel. There was two kings of Israel at the time. There was a lot going on. But essentially they were facing an opposition of this other army. This really big, scary army that was much bigger than them. And they were worried. And because of their worry and their doubt, Elisha, who was the prophet sent by God, started to also get kind of bogged down by everything that all these people were saying and the circumstances and the situation he was in. But in 2 Kings chapter 3, verse 14, we see Elisha does something quite special in order to get closer to the Lord and remove himself from all the voices around him. Elisha said, As surely as the Lord Almighty lives, whom I serve, if I did not have respect for the present of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, which was the one king who actually believed that they could sort of get out this situation, even though his faith wasn't 100% there, Elisha said, I would not pay any attention to you all, but now bring me a harpist. While the harpist was playing, the hand of the Lord came on Elisha. So we understand that the Bible shows us that there is a great power in music, power in listening to music and worship that honors the Lord and that will lift up your spirits. So that's something important, especially with me. Like when I have these anxious thoughts where I start to overthink, I just begin to sing to the Lord and I give it to the Lord, even if I don't know a song. I just start singing the name of Jesus. I just say, Lord, I love you. And he comes and he comforts me. If you remember in the story of David and the story of Saul, King Saul used to be assaulted by spirits. He used to be assaulted by spirits of anger and depression. And he would call for David to play the harp for him. And that harp would elicit a spirit of peace that comes from the Lord. So we understand that music is very, very important. So be intentional of what you're listening to in this time. Listen to things and say things and sing things that uplift you and draw you closer to the Lord during your test and tribulation. The next thing I would suggest is to continue to draw yourself closer to the Lord and pray in the spirit. Sometimes there's certain things that English words we don't know. But the Lord understands our heavenly language. If you have the gift of the Holy Spirit and speaking in heavenly tongues, then you should speak in heavenly tongues to your Father in a way that only He can understand. And if you do not have that gift, you should earnestly ask of the Lord to give you this gift of tongues and the gift and evidence of the Holy Spirit. It says here in Ephesians 6 verse 10, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood. It's not about the people we see. It's not about housing. It's not about financial districts. It's not about your boss. It's not about your boyfriend or your girlfriend or your best friend. That's flesh and blood. But we battle against rulers, against authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm. So here we're seeing... That we're not battling with the flesh, the people that we see, but our battle is in the spirit realm. The Lord is the ruler of the supernatural, which is why it's important for us to ask for him to step in in these battles for us. Because it's not our fight, it's his fight in the spirit realm that he controls. And then in 13, it says, Therefore, put on the full arm of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground after you have done everything to stand. And it goes on to talking about what the armor of God is. But the main verse I want us to hone in on for Ephesians 6 is verse 18. It says, And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. So it tells us in verse 12, we're not fighting our flesh. We're not fighting flesh. It's not me arguing with these people or stating my case with this 
these people that's going to make me get this appeal any better. I recognize that. I recognize that instead of trying to fight with people, I do what I can do. I write the appeals I can. I'm as respectful as possible, but I take it to the Lord immediately and I start praying in the spirit. I start praying in tongues, asking the Lord to speak on my behalf and uplifting my spirit man because this is a fight of the spirit. So that was essentially the testimony. I've never done one of these before. I want to continue to let my faith be known. I'm not ashamed to be a follower of Jesus Christ. And I want to share the revelations that he has given me to other people. I don't just want to post and be like, my life is so amazing because my life is not amazing all the time. Okay. And it's still not where I want it to be, but I'm believing by faith for more. And I'm just trying to make this video so that someone is blessed. Maybe you're in a situation, like I said, similar to this one. If not this specific situation, maybe you're just in somewhere where you're in a test and trial. But just remember to stay close to the Lord. Continue to pray to Him. Worship when you don't have the words to say. Speak in tongues if you can. Just connect to Him on a deeper spiritual level. And walk in faith. Do not have doubt like the children of Israel. Walk forward. Believe in the promise that He's given you. And continue to move forward in faith in the name of Jesus. So... I love you all very much. If you're interested in watching some more videos, you definitely should. Regular content is coming, but more apartment content is also coming. So I pray that God blesses you. I'm so happy for all the support. It means the world to me and I'm praying for y'all. I love y'all and I'll see you later. Bye.